so this um, topic is related to automating an API supply chain uh, using a cloud native architecture. Uh, therefore, first of all, uh, we will look uh, into what cloud nativeness is. Uh, when someone says about cloud nativeness, uh, there are things that uh, comes to your mind, and there are some qualities that come to comes to your mind as well. Um, so when uh, talking about these things, these are essentially technologies that help to create uh, and deploy and run applications in highly scalable environments. And uh, when talking about the qualities that come to, come, come to your mind when uh, talking about cloud nativeness, um, are, uh, qualities such as immutability of run times and uh, fast uh, startup time, low footprint, uh, dynamic scaling, uh, rollout and rollback capabilities uh, with uh, proper versioning, and uh, decentralization of the runtime components. Um, if you uh, think in terms of an organization, uh, when moving towards cloud nativeness, basically you have to uh, go through a journey uh, uh, by uh, transforming your existing technologies uh, in two di dimensions, um, such as the physical dimension and the functional dimension. So uh, when talking about the physical dimensions, basically uh, you are talking about uh, the infrastructure that you are uh, going to use in order to deploy uh, and run these uh, applications. And from a functional point of view, uh, you see uh, different uh, patterns that you apply uh, in the context of the technologies that uh, you are going to use. However, uh, when you are moving towards uh, this cloud nativeness, um, uh, depending on uh, the current state of your organization within this particular graph, uh, your uh, strategies and the uh, set of tactical plans uh, and the technologies that you are, you are going to use uh, in order to reach the next level uh, is unique uh, to your organization. And um, based on that, you have to have a, a very unique um, selection of technologies in order to approach that. When talking about this uniqueness and unique uh, strategies and uh, unique technologies that you are going to use, you need some help or guidelines in order to choose proper technologies and uh, set proper directions. In order to help you with that, uh, there is a whole uh, different foundation uh, form called uh, like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And this is not a new thing. Uh, I, I know that everybody knows about this cloud native computing foundation, uh, uh, simply called as uh, the CNCF. Uh, and their definition of cloud nativeness is all about the technologies that empower organizations to uh, build and run scalable applications in dynamic environments such as the uh, such as public, private, and hybrid clouds. Um, when uh, classifying technologies according to uh, this uh, specification. Uh, they have presented this reference architecture by uh, logically separating these technologies into five uh, conceptual layers. Uh, as you can see, there, there are uh, five layers such as the infrastructure, uh, provisioning runtime layer, and orchestration and management layer, and application definition or uh, the development layer. Uh, so let's talk about this layer separately before we reach our uh, main topic. Uh, so infrastructure layer is basically the actual computing resources um, uh, in, in a particular deployment. This can be bare metal machines, uh, uh, that those are networked together in a, a normal data center, or it can be a collection of virtual machines in a virtual network. Um, as examples, you can see the VMware cloud stack, kind, open stack kind of uh, frameworks that you are using uh, in order to um, have this kind of infrastructure. Or otherwise, it could be some pub, uh, public cloud, uh, such as Google or Microsoft Azure or uh, Amazon AWS. Um, or simply, it, it can be a combination of uh, uh, this infrastructure or uh, actual computing resources. And when it comes to provisioning layer, you mainly identify the activities related to host management. Uh, so this in, involves installation and maintenance of uh, the operating systems and uh, apply and patches and keep them up to date. Uh, some examples are um, related to this layer, uh, core OS and Ranch OS. Uh, those are specialized in host um, operating systems uh, to complement uh, containerized environment. And uh, when talking about the runtime, uh, you can find three elements, three basic elements called the computer runtime, uh, sorry, the co container runtime interface, 
container network interface and uh, container storage interface. So in the container runtime interface, uh, you find different uh, uh, implementation of this uh, interface, such as uh, Docker and uh, Rocket kind of container implementations, uh, which are very popular these days. And at the network interface layer also, uh, there are some default or basic uh, implementation of this interface, such as bridge VLAN and IP VLAN kind of uh, basic uh, default implementation or uh, there can be other third party implementations uh, of this uh, container network interface in order to provision uh, network uh, sorry uh, storage products into this um, uh, ecosystem uh, similarly we have the container uh, storage interface uh, which can be implemented by different vendors and uh, orchestration uh, and management layer is the next uh, conceptual layer that we are going to talk about uh, there you mainly find uh, the container orchestration as, uh, platforms such as Kubernetes, uh, Cloud Foundry, Mesos, and Nomad. And uh, this involves activities uh, related to container scheduling, provisioning, uh, launching, and discovery. And then you find uh, container monitoring and tracing and uh, crash recovery. Uh, then when it comes to handling uh, the traffic, uh, you find the routing load balancing capabilities with, uh, with services and load balancers uh, that are installed in this layer. Uh, and it basically provides you with a way to uh, de uh, declare your configuration using um, configuration files such as um, YAML files. And then we have the next layer, which is the application uh, definition or development layer. So this is where uh, most of the cloud native application developers engage. And uh, you will find the languages, uh, frameworks, uh, registry products, and data and CI, CD pipeline tools in this layer. Uh, so application specific configuration and image, uh, image repositories are also uh, related to this particular layer. Uh, so uh, we went through all of uh, these five layers. And if you go to the CNCF uh, uh, main website, you will find this interactive uh, 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 diagram where they have listed uh, the uh, chosen uh, or uh, uh, technologies uh, cat by categorizing into these five uh, conceptual layers. So if you are looking uh, for any uh, collection of uh, interoperable technologies in order to fit in these layers, you can simply find uh, these technologies uh, using cncf.io um, website. And uh, you can see WSO2 uh, is there as a silver member uh, under the API gateway in the orchestration and management layer. Uh, so let's talk about uh, WSO2 API and integration platform. So this is a quick recap to what you have already gone through. There you can find the main elements of WSO2 API integration platform. Uh, specifically, um, I would like to highlight here the design center, engagement center, and the runtime components, uh, because these are uh, the main components that we find in the reference architecture that I'm going to present you next. Uh, before moving into that also, uh, I will um, quickly uh, give a recap to uh, what you have gone through related to API supply chain. Uh, you can see the simple, simple comparison between the industrial supply chain and the digital supply chain, uh, uh, which, you, which you would use in order to deliver APIs in the form of products. Uh, there you can see uh, the activities such as API integration, uh, API insights and monetization, uh, API DevOps management, and uh, API product, uh, product management uh, parts uh, as parts of the integrated uh, supply chain of APIs. Uh, so what we try to do with automation is to create and apply technologies to produce and deliver these goods and services, uh, which means APIs with minimal human intervention. So uh, that is why we uh, have this uh, reference architecture. Uh, so this is a vendor neutral reference architecture in order to uh, uh, build an API led integration platform so there you can see uh, uh, in the control plane, we have identity and access management and API management, uh, which uh, basically a module of governance 
There you can see the um, design and lifecycle management, traffic control, and policy uh, control um, as uh, activities related to API management. Uh, also, you can see the developer portal, and uh, in the observability section, uh, you see logging, tracing, and metrics, uh, and presenting them in the form of business insights and reports. Um, similar to the reference architecture, uh, which uh, CNCF presents, we have the infrastructure and container orchestration uh, platforms at the bottom. And then uh, we come to the main runtime elements uh, in this picture. Uh, there you can see microservices and serverless components, which are the backend uh, systems that you are going to use in a, this kind of an architecture. Uh, this could either be microservices or otherwise uh, it can be um, uh, some other kind of services uh, which would provide you with the backend functionalities. In the composition uh, or integration layer, you find elements such as the API gateway runtimes, as well as uh, the integration microservices, which should help you to integrate or uh, aggregate multiple uh, service endpoints and present them in a uh, composite manner, uh, helping you to create a new API interface in front of uh, the existing capabilities that you have. So there you can see uh, some verticals. In the first vertical, you see the uh, general integrated API supply chain system. And um, you can follow the same in order to uh, create different verticals, such as um, WSO to healthcare system, or otherwise uh, some other vertical uh, related to any other business domain, such as uh, open banking, uh, which you uh, just uh, went through uh, with the presentation. And uh, let's see how uh, WSO2 comes into this picture. Uh, in this picture, you can see uh, multiple products uh, that WSO2 offers. First of all, we have identity server in the control plane, a control and management plane in order to onboard all the identities and integrate uh, any uh, identity repositories with API manager in order to provide with API security and um, uh, identity and access management related capabilities. And API manager is there in order to um, uh, enforce governance uh, with uh, design and lifecycle management traffic control and uh, policy definition and control. Uh, as a special component here, you can see something called Kubernetes API operator, which uh, acts as an agent between the normal runtime, uh, the, the actual gateway and microservices runtime, and the uh, uh, control, uh, and, uh, control and management plane elements. Uh, underneath, you can see uh, we have Kubernetes as the deployment infrastructure or uh, the container orchestration system in this picture. So Kubernetes uh, API operator actually uh, interacts with Kubernetes in order to allow you to uh, onboard uh, WSO2 API gateways into this system, or this ecosystem, without having to worry about any configuration uh, or uh, any developments related to Kubernetes. So that is the uh, end goal that we achieve with uh, Kubernetes uh, API operator. And uh, in the observability section, we have listed uh, tools such as uh, uh, Prometheus and Jaeger, uh, which you can you, uh, use openly. Uh, let's talk about the uh, uh, Kubernetes API operator in detail. Uh, this is the functional overview of um, the API operator. So you can see uh, here there is a developer who uses something called the API command line tool. So using uh, this API command line tool, uh, what this developer has to do is uh, provide uh, a SAGA definition or open API three specification uh, to this command line tool, which would interact with uh, the existing Kubernetes uh, installation. And uh, this is the API operator that you have to install into the system. And uh, within, uh, the, uh, within the context of API operator, it maintains its uh, config map, uh, which would be based on the Saga definition that you provide. And we introduce uh, four different kinds into the uh, Kubernetes uh, deployment or Kubernetes uh, installation. The first kind is target endpoint, and uh, we have another kind for API definition and uh, security and rate limiting. So these are the four kinds that we introduce into uh, Kubernetes. And uh, with each kind, we have a, a, the, the, a resource definition and the controller. 
uh, uh, using this uh, API operator, it would run a Kaneko job in order to build a build an image. Uh, so Kaneko is a tool provided by Google in order to uh, create uh, Docker images uh, using a Docker file. So what this does is uh, it will run the Kaneko job and build the image uh, related to this particular API by combining WSO2 micro gateway binaries uh, and the binaries related to this particular API. And it would upload this uh, or push this into a repository that you, uh, that you um, define. So this could either be Docker Hub or uh, something like a, um, a private artifactory which you would uh, provide at the configuration stage. And uh, it also um, runs another job in order to create uh, these elements such as the service uh, service and the ports deployment and the uh, port auto scaler. So you can see uh, here uh, we have the service in order to fund this entire deployment. And uh, we have the deployment and within the deployment, we have the port replicas of the uh, same uh, micro gate instance, which would fund uh, your backend service uh, based on the number of replicas that you define. Um, uh, when, when you add this API, it will basically spin up uh, a certain number of uh, ports here. And it also spins up a horizontal ports auto scaler, uh, which should help uh, scaling this particular deployment. This is the final of uh, Kubernetes operator. Uh, in this picture, uh, what we have depicted is um, how this can be used with this API uh, CTL tool by a human user, uh, which can be uh, added to your CD, CI CD pipeline tools so that uh, these actions would uh, trigger uh, automatically uh, as a part of your CI CD process. Um, so even you, when we use the um, API operator for Kubernetes, these are the advantages uh, that uh, we obtain. Uh, basically, this hides the complexities uh, in API deployment uh, because you do not have to uh, work with the YAML file related to Docker or um, uh, Kubernetes. You just interact with the API CTL tool and it manages everything underneath. So you don't have to really worry about how to onboard uh, your containers into your repository or how to uh, pull them back into your Kubernetes deployment. Everything is uh, taken care of um, by this uh, API operator. And it simplifies the publishing process of a um, service as a managed API. Uh, which means you can uh, uh, use the same uh, tool in order to uh, publish this API into your um, uh, API publisher portal and uh, to the developer portal as well. Uh, it is also a part of uh, this uh, Kubernetes operator. And uh, it handles auto scaling of the API gateway runtime with the uh, uh, horizontal ports auto scaler, which we discussed about. And it facilitates promoting and demoting uh, APIs between and among environments, which is a topic that we are going to um, talk, talk about next. Uh, and um, in the um, operator hub, uh, you can see API manager operator for Kubernetes has been listed. So you can find it uh, on this website. Uh, I have added this as a reference. Uh, so this is uh, how we typically use this uh, API operator. So you can see this API, uh, API developer uh, develops the API. Uh, it can be done in uh, different ways. So you, I mean, uh, you can generate this Saga definition using WSO2 API manage itself, or otherwise you can uh, use something like the WSO2 developer studio in order to uh, generate or create a cycle definition um, uh, of um, an, any, any composite API that you are going to um, create as an integration microservice. So what we have to do ultimately is uh, we have to just upload this or push this into a uh, code repository. So this is the dev branch in this picture. And your CI CD pipeline can interact with this uh, code repository and fetch these changes. Using the Kubernetes uh, API operator, it can onboard uh, the relevant runtime artifacts into your uh, existing Kubernetes runtime. It also has a capability of pushing uh, the API metadata into the developer portal so that um, all the information related to this particular API becomes visible on the developer portal and the publisher portal. 
uh, then you can use the user centralized uh, normal uh, API manager installation in order to govern this entire uh, uh, dynamic runtime. Uh, so uh, these gateways are being governed by the uh, centralized control and management plane in this picture. And uh, once um, uh, this uh, the development work related to this um, API is done, it can be verified by um, a set of human users. And after the uh, approval process, it can be promoted into a uh, different environment using the same set of tools. Uh, basically, we provide a way to um, uh, provide uh, different endpoints and uh, environment specific parameters in a YAML file. Uh, once it is done, um, uh, the same set of uh, CI CD pipeline tools can engage and onboard these APIs into the uh, production or staging or any other uh, relevant environment. Uh, so, that is the um, um, overview about um, applying this concept into your CI CD pipeline and uh, completely automating the process of onboarding and managing uh, API, uh, APIs and uh, automating the API supply chain. Um, yeah, so uh, we have this white paper called uh, WSO2 Architecture for Agility on GitHub. Uh, so I would like to uh, welcome you to read this and uh, contribute uh, with your feedback and opinion and uh, um, proposed changes based on your experience. So this is somewhere you can uh, engage. And also, uh, I, um, I was uh, talking about the maturity model of different uh, organizations with related to the technology stack uh, uh, based on uh, where you are currently. Uh, you have to go through several changes uh, from uh, two dimensions, physical and functional dimensions. Uh, so this will also help such an organization to figure out where you are currently and how to um, choose the relevant technologies and what are the strategies that you need to set in order to reach the next level of becoming truly cloud native and truly agile. Uh, so uh, I have quoted this uh, from the presentation of um, uh, my colleagues uh, who presented the same topic in other summits. Uh, so uh, this is from Bill Gates. Uh, what this uh, essentially says is, um, uh, so automation, uh, if you apply uh, automation into an efficient operation, it will magnify the efficiency. Uh, otherwise, uh, if, you're, if you apply the same into an inefficient operation, it will magnify the inefficiency. So in order to um, uh, choose a uh, way to um, set your operations efficient, you can actually um, have WSO2's help uh, with this uh, kind of uh, architecture, um, uh, architectural guides, or otherwise you can uh, simply contact WSO2 